And just like that, I got hooked on an idea which immediately spiraled into a huge project with a teeny tiny timeline. I searched for medieval outfits on Pinterest and there was one image that caught my eye and it's this beauty. This particular card depicts a stack high coat lady, so the outfit I'm going to recreate represents the upper class medieval lady, but I believe I will tone down some of the flamboyance due to the limited time available and the practicality of wearing it in modern transportation systems. You definitely can't see it in the image, but she's wearing an undergarment like every lady of the time. And it just so happened that during my research I found an article about the so-called Langberg bra, which discusses archaeological finds consisting of multiple undergarments found in the castle Langberg in Austria. These garments were carbon dated and dated to the 15th century, the same time as my playing card inspiration was made. So I decided to recreate this bra and extend it into a dress. I started with a simulation of the garment based on a pattern by Katafalk and I will provide the link to her blog in the description. I tweaked some parts to fit my personal avatar. I knew that there is something going on with the cups but I decided to figure this out while sewing the mock-up. First I glued my new pattern together and then cut out the pieces. You can see the large cut-out hole in the front piece where the cups will be inserted. They consist of two lemon-like shapes. There's a contemporary text referring to these as bags for the breasts. In a satiric poem we are told that women are making bags for their breasts walking around the town so that the boys can see how beautiful they are. But if the breasts are too big, she should make smaller bags so people won't say they are too big. With the pieces cut out and the notches set, I sewed the first pieces together. Okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it looks like a ghost with two big eyes. <laughs> but I think the overall shape is just right. This looks so weird. <laughs> I'm just not used to this form or shape, but basically I'm happy with it. I have to fix a little bit here, so I will swap or switch the zipper to the side and then readjust this part here. Yes. But the back is perfect, this lower part is perfect. I guess it's just adjusting this area here and then I'm good. I disassembled the mock-up and made a new one to check if I actually got things right without the many distraction seams and patches. With the new mock-up I was pretty happy but not entirely sure about the silhouette. Something felt wrong to me. Nonetheless, I decided to leave it as it was and continue. So I disassembled the mock-up once again and this time transferred the pattern pieces to paper, making sure not to forget to mark the notches for better assembly later on. With the pattern prepared, I had to decide on the fabric. So I asked Clara if she knew where to buy some wool and linen and we decided to search for it on a local Dutch fabric market. We were fortunate that the next market was just a couple of days away and we went there despite the most unpleasant weather. We searched for wool and linen for our costumes and we were quite successful. Interestingly, as soon as we left the market, the sun started shining again. <laughs> One of the fabrics I acquired was a simple white linen, which I proceeded to cut into the pattern pieces, pinned together and then sewed.
I used a thick linen thread and was pleasantly surprised by how well my sewing machine handled it. I wanted to see if I could save some time by sewing the main seams with the machine since I'm on a tight schedule with this project and I was more than pleased with the result. Let's just pretend I'm an Edwardian girl sewing my historically not so accurate medieval costume. For the cups I decided not to use my sewing machine but to rely on my trusty old hand sewing. The mock-up taught me that the cups are quite difficult to sew in without creating wrinkles. So I began by felling down the middle seam of the cup which I had sewn by machine since it was a flat seam. Once this was done, I proceeded by pinning a cup into the hole, ensuring that my notches aligned and the cups were on their corresponding sides as the outer cup is slightly different in shape from the inner one. I used a backstitch to sew the cups to the bodice and tried to align the marked lines as best as possible. Then I carefully trimmed the seam allowance of the bodice short and folded both sides over onto the bodice. This way I achieved a rather flat surface with as little bulk around the cups as possible. By the way, I'm filling the seam allowance to the outer side of the garment, so the inside is smooth and won't irritate my skin. I borrowed this idea from Cutterfuck's blog post, as I thought this was a quite smart thing to do. Straps were sewn on by machine and the entire upper bodice had its seam allowance folded in and under, then fell down. You've seen me using the phalanx stitch quite regularly now and I think it's my most frequently used hand sewing stitch so far. With the bodice almost finished, I decided to add the skirt. To determine the length, I measured the circumference of the waistline of the bodice. I multiplied this length by two, as it wouldn't gather nicely otherwise, and I needed enough space to walk. Since the linen wasn't cut straight, I pulled a thread at the edge to level it out. Then I cut along this line and repeated the procedure at the desired length of the skirt. Next, I hemmed the skirt with a phalanx stitch.
for the upper seam I used the whip stitch together the fabric. I basically rolled the fabric to the inside and wound the thread around this tiny roll, then pulled it tightly together. This created a gathered and finished edge, which I then pinned onto the bodice to ensure even distribution. Having used double the length of fabric, I gathered it almost perfectly to match the length of the bodice. I sewed the skirt onto the already hemmed bottom of the bodice. I don't know if this was done this way in medieval times, but I wanted the garment with entirely finished seams. And this was the only solution I came up with. You can see here the tiny bubbles the whip stitch creates. I first sewed them to the inside of the garment and then decided to turn them around and place them on the outside, as they are somewhat harder and scratchy. This would have made placing all the other seam allowance onto the outside futile. I finished the sewing, so basically only the side seam is still open and I will set um, some reinforcement in there to make the eyelets. But I found one recreation of the ra, and there is a cord just at the edge set in in order to reinforce it once again. So what I thought I will do is making this cord out of loops and set it in there and then um, sewing in the eyelets and basically leaving a slit around here. So I sew two strips of fabric to the open side seam to reinforce it, then close the skirt, leaving the slit at the top open. Next I made a looped cord which is created by pulling a loop through the previous loop. It's similar to the basic crochet chain stitch but pulled much tighter. The cord was secured at the top of the side seam, then the reinforcement was folded over it. And finally I sewed the cord into the reinforcement by placing a back stitch right next to it. This created a slightly elevated edge, which should provide some stability. Once the cord was sewn in, I secured the reinforcement with a phalanx stitch, making sure to include both the lower and upper edges. The last step was to sew the eyelets. I began with a ring of step stitches to secure the fabric in place. Then I used an awl to force the fabric apart and chose to use the blanket stitch to reinforce the opening. This step took a while as eyelets seemed to be the most time consuming part of the project.
this funny bra dress is finished, I just think I'm going to change one thing. <laughs> I will show you, but I will first make it. So, remember this? This is how it looks now. I have to make some darts into the cups because they're just way too... They made wrinkles I don't like, so that's why I'm adding some darts. I took out approximately two centimeter of fabric, folded it down and pinned it onto the cup. Then using a phalanx stitch again, I sewed the dart to the cup, first from the outside and then from the inside. The very last step was to finish the call, as I had quite a few meters to make to allow enough space while putting the dress on. I found it much easier to hold the cord in my hands than pinning it to something, so I proceeded this way. I threaded the cord through the eyelets with a thick needle. And this is how it looks now. And I think it looks so much better than before. I just don't make those wrinkles here anymore. Luckily, this garment is usually not seen, as it is worn the wrong way around with all the seam allowance on the outside. Maybe they thought the same way back then. My channel has just been monetized and I want to express my huge thank you to all of you for watching my videos. As a result of reaching this milestone I wanted to introduce channel memberships and let you know that you will enjoy the same benefits as my Patreon members. Right now I've uploaded some vlog style videos showcasing two medieval garments I've sewn recently. These garments aren't for me so I won't be making extensive videos about them. I'm currently testing out different content and features to see what works best and I'd love your support and input to help me shape the future of my channel and those memberships. I've settled on providing an exclusive update video or vlog style um, each month for my supporters, at least for now. As I said, I will develop and see what really works. If you're interested in supporting me and helping me figure out what bonus content should be included, you're warmly welcome to he head over to the either Patreon or become a member here on YouTube and join my little group. Thank you so much for either of your support, be it watching the video, liking, subscribing, commenting or becoming a member of my group. Each of them means a lot to me. Bye! Doing this in a basically just a bra is kind of weird, is it? <laughs>